This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Detailing dimensioning. So dimensioning is a big part of what we do when we're drawing floor plans. People need to know sizes of things. So that's what we're going to look at right now in the context of detailing. And we're going to look in this view right here. This is our section. It's full 3D. We're going to just zoom into this full 3D section and just click on the view and let's activate the view. Dimensioning can be found under annotate and right here under dimension. You can do aligned or linear. Aligned is preferable. Linear tends to just go to points, but align tends to go between objects and this one tends to be the more versatile and common one to use. Okay, so if I click on aligned, Right away, it takes me to the dimensioning toolbar. You can see in the ribbon, there's all of the tools specifically for the dimensioning tool. Now, before we get dimensioning right away, it's important that we talk about two things, the style and the project units. They both work hand in hand. Let's click under the style first. So let's edit type. So we're doing something which we do and have done quite a bit up until now. Let's duplicate. We're going to call this one dim one. Enter. Okay. Now that you can control a number of different things about this dimension. There's the different parts of the dimension object, and Revit has its own names for each of these pieces, and I'll explain these in depth as we go along. And they relate to all of these things right here. So there's tick marks, there's dimension string, there's witness lines, there's center lines. You also have a text component. It does not read an existing text style you've made you need to make your own. So I'm going to go and do that right now. I'm going to make this 0.75 again, the width of the text. It's just like making a text style. Then we can say I want it to be 330 seconds. Sure. What about the style? What kind of font do we want to use? So there's the text font. We can just choose stylus is what I had used for the other style. So let's use that again. Of course, you're free to use whatever you want. Good, so that's a good beginning. We've picked the size, but really we're talking about the units format. That's really what dimensioning all comes down to. So if I click on this button right here, it takes you to the format. Notice what it's saying, use project settings. What are the project settings? How do we find that? Well, let's do that right now. We're gonna say okay and accept this. Let's hit escape twice and get right out of the command for dimensioning. Let's go under manage. Let's go under Settings and Project Units. Click on that. These are the default settings for our units, and this is something that when we picked the template from the beginning, this was all set right in the template file. And that's great because you don't want to have to go in and change all these. Of course, we know Revit is very versatile when it comes to units, but this is great to have all set up. Let's take a look at the length. Click on that. All lengths. Our feet and fractional inches to the nearest one thirty second. The other thing I like to do here, this is all fine. The precision is quite good for this particular project. We can suppress the zero feet. And what that means is it's not going to show zero foot eight. And you know, I've never seen that on a drawing that I've been in contact with. So let's just suppress that zero feet. Okay, good. We'll say okay. Of course, you can go in and change maybe you want your lengths to be in feet and inches and your areas to be in square inches or square meters or something like that. Of course, square feet makes the most sense in this case, but you can change all of this stuff. Under currency, you can even change that. So you could have a unit symbol, use digit grouping, and that'll put some commas in, sort of like that. And that's good for when you're doing schedules. All right, we're going to just say OK to that, and let's go back to our dimension. So annotate aligned. Dim one, edit type, and let's take a look at the units format again. So I'm going to click on that. So it's using the project settings. Now we can even take it further and say no. Even though the project is done in feet and inches, we want it to be dimensioned using this style in millimeters or decimal inches or something. So you can choose that. In this case, we're sticking with feet and fractional inches. The rounding is set to the nearest 132nd. 
you know, you're going to get some comments if you're dimensioning to the nearest 1 32nd. So let's put that down to maybe a quarter inch. And even that can be quite precise, but let's go with that. So we'll say OK. And then we'll say OK. And now we have a style that we can start out with. We're in the align style. And let's just do an overall dimension, just from level to level, just to get warmed up. So we'll go from there to there. We know that's eight feet. Let's make sure that that's right. So you click on the line. So I'm not really clicking, looking for points. In AutoCAD, you look for endpoint, endpoint, perpendicular. You're actually looking for faces. So there we go. It says eight feet. What about something like a width? So we're going to go from this wall. And really, the tab key is what's going to be important here. You're going to want to tab to the object that you want to dimension to. This is telling me in the status bar, which is right down there. Just hover and tab. That's the wall. Good. That goes over to here. Tab. Click there. So we've got 10 feet. And that's confirmed that we started out with that. So that's good. Now let's zoom in a little bit. And again, we can just hover over here and we can tab and click the key points that we want. If you don't get the line that you want, like I don't want the end of this ceiling, I want the end of this wall, but it's not giving it to me. So I need to tab. I hover and tab and then click. So you pick your first line, your second line, those extension type lines are called witness lines. And then you just drag down the whole dimension string to where you want it to be. That offset, that little locking offset, that's set in the dimension style. Let's click it to there. Okay, we could continue on. We could go from tab. Now, if there's a point, see right now what's happening is there's a thickness to these lines. So you can see it's going from the middle of the thicker line type. But you see how it's going to just catching up a little point there. Kind of hard to see it. If I zoom in, you can see it. That's the middle of the line. This is just giving us a line weight. If ever you're concerned about the line weights, just go up here to that line weights, that thin lines control we talked about earlier. And now things will be a lot more precise. So let's go aligned again. Go from here to that point and over to there. We can hit escape twice. That'll take us out of the dimension command. We may want to dimension this little part right here from the window to the top of the countertop. So let's go aligned, and we're just going to pick the top of the countertop. And then just where the window is framed in, we can just do something, maybe like put it on the outside. Now, that might not be something written in stone. Perhaps they need to adjust this window based upon where the soffit's going to be. I'm going to hit Escape. Let's click on this dimension. And let's just double click on the dimension itself. Now, what would happen if I just went in here and said, no, 8 inches? So I'm not moving the object. I'm just trying to change the value. It will not let you do that. So don't even try. If you want to actually move the element, that's fine. If I click on the element and then click in the dimension, I can move it up to 8 inches, sure. But you can't just double click on the dimension and change what it says as far as the actual value. Let's just click on that window, click in the dimension, type in 7 inches and hit enter. And now that's been lowered down. What if I wanted to put something like minimum or verify on site? Well, I could double click in here and say, let's prefix it with minimum. And let's just suffix it with verify, or we could just say site verify. OK, so that's fine. It doesn't mind that. Minimum 7 inches site verify. You can drag any of these little grips and just drag that out. You can see there's a leader that goes with that. Now you can drag it down if you want, or if you want to put it right back, you just drag it back into its original position. OK, this one right here is sort of cutting off the cupboard because of its opacity. I'll just move it over. And that's how you can tweak these dimensions. Let's take a quick look at some of the other dimension styles you have here. So there is an angular, and that'll just pick between two angular lines. So if I just click there, say between there and there, it'll give me that angle. Now for this roof slope, there's actually a spot slope element. You can click on that. You can use a triangle. 
and then you can just pick on the object that you want to use. So you just click, don't worry about where it is. Okay, and then you can choose what side you want it to be on, inside, outside. There we go. And then when you're done, you can just hit escape twice, click on that, and you can change the size of it. You can move it up the slope if you want. And we're a little bit tight on space here. I might just move this down right into free space right down there so we can see that's 410. You always want to make sure that you're verifying the slope because if you pick the wrong line at times, if there's a hip line that's in the same plane, it may give you a lower number than what is actually there because it's reading the hip rafter slope. So make sure you confirm the slope. I can click on this roof and then just look at it as far as what the slope is. It is 4 and 12, so that's good. And this is reading that, so if this were to change, this would also change. You also have things like spot elevations, so you can click a, a specific location and you can say how high that is from zero. So I could click there, two clicks, and that's at three feet. And this works in 3D as well. You have other dimensioning objects like radial and arc length. We don't have time to go through all those right now. As you would expect, you can just click the object and then click the location of your text. Okay, well, we were going to come back to the dimension style and just tweak it a tiny bit more. If I click on any one of these dimensions, I can go back and edit the type. And here I am right in dim one. And I could change things like the tick mark. I could choose a different size, like perhaps the diagonal 3 fourths. Or there's dots, there's triangles, there are arrows, there are many different things you can use for the tick mark. There's line weights. Find there. Gaps to elements. You also have the offset from the dimension string itself of the text is right there. And we'll just say OK to that. And you can see here on all of these styles we made, the tick mark has been made smaller. And then there's the witness line and the dimension line extension. So we can change those as well. So we could maybe say 16th. And the witness line extension, let's go with 1 16th, enter, and OK. And now that's made it a little bit smaller. If we were to just turn on thin lines before we're done, you'll see that those tick marks are all done. This is actually its own style because it's a angular style. We may want to edit that type, duplicate it. We'll call it dim one angular. And then we can make the changes that we need to that as well. I'll leave that up to you to change. I won't change it on mine. All right, let's do a zoom extents. Let's deactivate the view. And let's save. I just want to discuss one more thing, though, before we're done. The dimensioning and the text, they all appear just on the view that they're put in. So for instance, section at window has all of these dimensions. It has a roof slope tag. Notice it didn't show up in the callout. All annotations are purely in the views that you're in. That's an important thing to learn about Revit. Now we could go back to our floor plan and we could dimension this as well. It's good practice. And we can just activate the view. And as a shortcut, I can type in DI and then we can just start dimensioning. And I can use the tab key to decide where I'm dimensioning to. And we can rebalance things. It's always not a bad idea just to look through at the status bar and just see exactly what face you're getting. You want to make sure you're getting the walls. I may have gotten actually a cabinet there or a countertop. So this dimension is actually linked to the countertop, not the wall. So if the countertop changes, not the wall. So you got to watch for little things like that. I'm going to type in DI. I'm going to tab, and then I'm going to go over to that wall tab until I actually see it say wall. There we go. Now we're all set. And we can rebalance all of these marks and dimensions as we go. That's another reason why it's great to actually work right on the sheet as you're dimensioning. OK, so we'll leave it at that. And I'll leave it to you to put as many or as few dimensions on as you want.